Hello, everybody. Welcome to my lecture on electroacoustic. I am very happy today that you have decided to watch this lecture. My name is Ercan Altinsoy. I will start this lecture with a short introduction. Electroacoustic is a very important subject. Electroacoustic devices plays in our daily life very important role also for modern communication society. Therefore, we use a lot of electroacoustic devices and we would like to describe them. We would like to give some requirements for such kind of this, uh, systems. Therefore, I will discuss uh, such kind of properties like amplitude frequency response or harmonic distortion. And then I will go another subject because if we talk such kind of transducers, electroacoustic transducers, in most cases we have mechanical systems, electrical systems combin combined and at the end of course acoustical aspects. Therefore we need uh, some analogies to use to describe such kind of systems and therefore I will talk on the electromechanical and electroacoustical analogies. And then another important topic is of course uh, transducers, loudspeakers and microphones, headphones and earphones. I will talk about such kind of transducers and I will finish my lecture with what is new in this field and describe some recent developments in this field. Electroacoustics, as I already said, that is a fascinating and challenging field in engineering because our products can be audible and we can decide that if we have good or bad system and therefore it is very meaningful for communication society. It is an integral part of communication acoustics and of course electroacoustics is based on knowledge from electrical engineering, acoustics, physics, mechanics and perception. Therefore it is fascinating and it is very multidisciplinary field. It deals with different transducer technologies, therefore we will talk today also different transducer technologies. But I would like to start with a traditional electroacoustical transmission chain. In that case, we have, of course, different sources. It can be music, it can be speech, it can be product. And in that case, we need to record it. And for recording, we use a transducer, which we know already, microphone. Of course, this recording environment, room, plays also a very important role. Therefore, room acoustics is very important, which you take another lecture on room acoustics. And in this chain, there are different system components like preamplifier or analog digital converter or digital signal processing, which plays a role, but at the end, our aim in most cases to reproduce this speech signal, music signal or product sound and therefore we use some loudspeakers and other transducers and we need amplifier or digital analog converter or decoders. There are also other electroacoustical systems like telecommunication systems like in this slide. In this case, we have one microphone and one loudspeaker at each side. It means that each telephone has one microphone and one loudspeaker. It, uh, of course, also very important digital signal processing, which is inside of these devices and plays a role on the transmission of these signals and degradation of these signals, which we will talk a little bit later in this lecture. The main aim of the transducers is to convert electrical energy to acoustical energy. In that case, we are talking on loudspeakers. The microphone converts 
a critical energy to electrical energy, which means that it makes in other direction. And except of microphones and loudspeakers, of course, among of all others, we have headphones and earphones, which are very important electroacoustical transducers. And the nice point is that uh, we use uh, in different applications, microphones and loudspeakers, huge amount of applications like broadcasting, music recording or tablet, laptop, telecommunication, video conferencing, cars, augmented reality, hearing aids, sound pressure level matters, active noise control are, or sound re reinforcement. And for such kind of transducers or of course system models, we have some requirements. For example, if we would like to buy a loudspeaker, first of all, it is important to know that how much sound pressure level I need. For example, if I would like to use this loudspeaker in a concert hall in a huge uh, volume, then I need very high sound pressure level. Or if I would like to hear music at the home, in most cases, I need lower sound pressure levels. But depending on the application, we should, of course, think about maximum sound pressure level, which can be realized by th this transducer. Also, frequency response, amplitude frequency response is very important. In most cases, we would like to have linear amplitude frequency response. Another important issue is the nonlinear distortion. Of course, our aim is always as low as possible nonlinear distortion. And the, another parameter which we use to describe such kind of electroacoustic transducer is the signal to noise ratio. It is defined as the ratio of the power of a signal and power of background noise. And the higher the signal noise ratio, the better it is, of course. Another important aspect is directivity characteristics and smoothly changing polar characteristics with frequency is always very helpful for us and for good quality. But at the end, our ears are very important because in most cases, of course, our perception decided this is a good quality or this is a bad quality. Therefore, we need some also psychoacoustical aspects or psychoacoustical requirements for such kind of systems. For example, for uh, long distance telecommunication, we use clarity or for high fidelity loudspeakers, we use transparency. These are some examples. I would like to discuss these subjects or these properties separately and in detail. And I would like to start with frequency response. As I already said that from our microphones or from our loudspeakers, we would like to have that flat frequency response. It means that in our audible frequency range from 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz, we would like to have that this transistor doesn't cause any distortion. And of course, in this case, there are different kind of aspects like, for example, our frequency response can be wavy like ripple or it can be flat. Or of course, we can have some dips or peaks. It means that in that frequency range, our music signal or uh, speech signal will be amplified or lowered. And of course, we don't want to change our input signal uh, because of our system. The nice solution for such kind of linear distortion, actually we describe frequency response analysis as linear distortion, is the, uh, and the solution for it is the frequency dependent equalization. In most cases also perception should be taken into account because we tolerate some ripples or some 
changes in the amplitude domain, but of course uh, it is about minus plus three decibel. 